This is Edward Morrow speaking from London. Broadcast news began with Ed Morrow right from the get-go, right from the standing start. He set the highest standard for professionals. Born in 1908, Edward R. Murrow would become one of the most influential broadcasters, and he had many iconic characteristics. His voice patterns, his wardrobe, uh, the cigarette as prop, uh, the furrowed brow. The pauses. He could dramatize almost any event. Someone said if he said 26, it would sound like the most important utterance since the Gettysburg Address. This is London. This is London. His radio broadcasting career began at CBS when he was looking to hire a European correspondent to cover the happenings in Nazi Germany. I went with CBS in uh, 35, as I say, as director of talks and education, and then went to Europe in the beginning of 1937. At that time, uh, the European staff consisted of one person, and I was it. But it all changed at the time of the Anschluss in 1938. From then on, I started broadcasting myself, uh, not because I had any ability at it, but because all the reporters were so busy, we couldn't get them to stop doing their own jobs. So Bill Shire and I started broadcasting. This incident led to him being involved in the revolutionary multi-point live reports that became the basis for World News Roundup, which still runs on CBS Radio today. To bring you the picture of Europe tonight, Columbia now presents a special broadcast, which will include pickups direct from London, from Paris, and such other European capitals as, at this late hour abroad, have communication channels available. He now takes you to Vienna, Austria. This is Edward Murrow speaking from Vienna. It's now nearly 2.30 in the morning, and Herr Hitler has not yet arrived. Murrow achieved high status with his reports during World War II. He flew on 25 Allied combat flights and reported from planes, front lines, and rooftops, ending each of his broadcasts with his now iconic good night and good luck. Good evening. We're standing on a rooftop. In the 1950s, the medium for news telling made the shift to TV. CBS's radio show Hear It Now was rechristened See It Now, and Murrow was at the helm. CBS Television presents the distinguished reporter and news analyst Edward R. Murrow in See It Now, a document for television based on the week's news, told in the voices and faces that made the news. Now, the editor of See It Now, Edward R. Murrow. This is an old team trying to learn a new trade. See It Now focused on a number of controversial issues in the 1950s, but is best remembered as the show that criticized McCarthyism and the Red Scare, contributing, if not leading, to the political downfall of Senator Joseph McCarthy. Good evening. Tonight, See It Now devotes its entire half hour to a report on Senator Joseph R. McCarthy, told mainly in his own words and pictures. Apparently, the President and I now agree on the necessity of getting rid of communists. We apparently disagree only on how we should handle those who protect communists. It is necessary to investigate before legislating, but the line between investigating and persecuting is a very fine one, and the junior senator from Wisconsin has stepped over it repeatedly. We must not confuse dissent with disloyalty. We must remember always that accusation is not proof, and that conviction depends upon evidence and due process of law. This is no time for men who oppose Senator McCarthy's methods to keep silent, or for those who approve. We cannot defend freedom abroad by deserting it at home. The actions of the junior senator from Wisconsin have caused alarm and dismay amongst our allies abroad, and given considerable comfort to our enemies. And whose fault is that? Not really his. He didn't create this situation of fear, he merely exploited it, and rather successfully. Cassius was right. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves. Murrow faced endless criticism for his reports, but managed to maintain a large audience not only on See It Now, but also for his other CBS program, Person to Person, where he interviewed celebrities. I always believed, as Ed did, that when we got into, quote, trouble at the McCarthy program, that a lot of people sided with Ed because they liked the fine man who was on person-to-person -person entertaining them all week. Good evening, Mrs. Roosevelt. Good evening, Mr. Morrow. 
Are you there, Senator? Yes, right here, Mr. Morrow. Good evening, sir. When Ed Morrow did prison to prison and took us inside those homes and treated the uh, young politician like uh, John Kennedy, uh, the same way that he treated uh, Sophie Tucker, for example, and made us see that they were people, that was innovative. But the one thing that all these new programs, which touch on everything that we never even dreamed of in the days of See It Now, the one thing they don't have is Edward R. Murrow. See It Now was the first television program to have a report about the connection between smoking and cancer, and Murrow was almost never seen without his trademark camel cigarette. He developed lung cancer and lived for two years after an operation to remove his lung, and on April 27, 1965, he passed away. A fearless broadcaster, Edward R. Murrow, will always be remembered. Good night and good luck.